Welcome everybody to the last uh, N3C community forum in June. And uh, next next month, uh, I'm going to be actually in Ireland and Italy taking an unprecedentedly long vacation. Haven't done that since college for a month. So uh, Janos uh, um, will be taking over uh, in July and then we're off in August. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, as always, uh, the uh, proceedings are being recorded, even as we speak, uh, and Q&A uh, and chat for questions or just speak up if you're panelists. Matt, next slide, please. So uh, this is a review, but the N3C publication in 10 form uh, is uh, now available as it's been for the last couple of weeks, and as I understand it, there's this is a reminder rather than uh, a new update, but it's good for people to to know about. So, if you're planning to submit manuscripts, abstracts, posters, presentations, uh, um, you can uh, get them to the N3C Publications Committee to um, review. And there's a uh, demo presentation of the new form and a presentation of the Publication Committee processes and policies with the appropriate links. Next, next slide, please. So, uh, okay, and I think we went over this a couple a couple of weeks ago. So uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be on break in August. It's a very nice calendar, probably care of Microsoft or somebody. Okay, next slide, please. Um, okay, so we have our um, we have we have our um, 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 Palantir. Uh, uh, infrastructure and uh, about 8 million COVID positive uh, cases. Uh, next slide, please. And um, so N3, N3C clinical pilot demos, June 26, uh, new homepage process to apply for data access. But is, is somebody going to be talking about this now? I'm actually confused about that. It's okay. I guess not. Okay. I, so, do you want me to? I can give an update if you want. Okay. If there's if there's a change, or you can remind people. I I, I see I see it's actually it's unusual because it says it's upcoming, but it's actually now. So okay. Yeah. So this was just I think here as kind of a uh, just an announcement that we now have data within the N3C clinical pilots, and. Um, uh, so that's very, very exciting. Um, the, the goal is to have sort of all of the testing in this pilot phase done by the end of August. So um, the announcement here is to say that there's a new homepage. Um, we can place the link in the chat. Um, and there's a new process to apply for data access to participate in one of those tenants that leverages the new governance that was set up by um, the community on the Friday governance calls. And we can also place the information about those calls in the chat as well. But essentially there is uh, um, new governance that supports the sharing of a longitudinal phenotype as we presented before, and then the um, execution of a computable phenotype specific to the tenant DOR. So for example, um, we have a COPD tenant. So there's a COPD computable phenotype that then provisions data to that tenant. The sites that agree to participate in uh, to, to deliver data to that tenant are the sites that decide who is acceptable to allow into their tenant to do analytics. So if you're interested in participating in any of the analytics in any of the tenants, um, you can go to the website on the link that we'll post, um, and those sites would be involved in coordinating with you, um, your potential contributions to that, and would, would welcome conversation. I think that's, oh, that's exciting. So Melissa, if you could remind people what the tenants are, what are the, what are the, what are the areas? So we, we have an Alzheimer's tenant, we have a COPD tenant, and we have an acute kidney injury, um, kidney disease tenant. There's also plans for an NCI funded cancer tenant, but that has not been executed yet. Um, there are also some in discussions, um, some other tenants as well. And we would, uh, as the as the pilot ends, we'd look forward to hearing what people's priorities are for the next phase moving forward starting in September. Well, that's fantastic. And also, Joel, to add, yeah, I think it's supposed to say July 10th. I think this will be the next forum presentation. Okay. Okay, great. No, thanks. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Melissa. Okay, so uh, privacy preserving record linkage updates and 
uh, Saad will be uh, talking about that from uh, Palantir. So um, let's share the screen and uh, look forward to hearing about it. Sure, let me share my screen. Right. Can you see this? Yep. Great. So um, what I wanted to show today are is just some updates on the available PPRL or privacy preserving record linkage resources in, in the N3C Enclave. Uh, so this is not an in-depth uh, presentation about PPRL. I'll just point to the uh, available training resources. This is more of a, a reminder of uh, the recent new features that we've added and new data sets that we have added, um, and then how to more some practical information on how to request access to them, how to use them, how do they interact with each other. So um, this is what I mentioned. I'll talk about generally what are the PPRL data sets available, and then I'll talk a little bit about the recent updates that we did to the manifest table. Um, we also introduced some features um, that allow uh, researchers to deduplicate um, some N3C patients uh, using uh, some PPRL um, variables. And then I'll talk about the um, more recent updates to the CMS claims that we've added to the platform. So um, again, I'm not going into the details of PPRL, but this is just a high level uh, overview, um, which is basically saying that uh, we're able here to link data from multiple sources uh, without necessarily knowing their personal details. So if a person went to the EHR system and then we have data about the same person uh, in a separate resource from a sequencing center, for example, or from in, in uh, CMS uh, Medicare, then we're able to um, know in N3C that it's the same patient and link the records from the two sources within N3C. Uh, and in order to have access to these uh, PPRL data sets, we need to have a level three DUR and uh, which requires an IRB protocol. So uh, this is just a reminder of the PPRL data sets that are available in the platform. And I'll quickly switch into a, a platform demo. Uh, but on a high level, and um, this was a while ago, we were able to integrate mortality data coming from sources such as obituary.com, social security administration, uh, and private obituary. So this is data that is not coming from our data partners, but we were able to link uh, and complement the death table that is in the uh, uh, OMAP format that is coming from sites with some records from the mortality data. And so in the uh, PPRL data collection uh, in N3C Enclave, we have the mortality table, and I'm just passing the schema here that is showing the same N3C person ID, the date of birth, date of death, and then the source where it's coming from. And the source here will either be SSA, Social Security Administration, uh, Private Obituary, or Obituary.com, uh, and the N3C data partner ID. Uh, similarly, we also integrated viral variant data and linked it to uh, the N3C table. So you will see, um, uh, and this is for a smaller subset of data partners, but you will see a table in the PPRL data collection, and I'll show that in a bit, uh, with the follow following schema. So again, the N3C person ID is what you use to link patients across these data sets. And then you will have information here about the the lineage, the, the variant lineage. Um, and then I'll talk also about the CMS claims and the addition uh, of the global app person ID column to the person table that allows you to deduplicate patients. Um, all of this will be in the data catalog um, in the PPRL datasets collection. So if you have access to PPRL datasets, you will be able to see and import these tables in your analysis. And let me quickly switch to uh, the platform. Um, and then uh, I guess before showing where you can find the data sets in the data catalog, just a reminder on how to request access uh, to these tables. So if you're a 
a lead investigator and you want to create a new project, so a new DUR in the platform with access to these PPRL data sets such as claim, mortality, and viral variants in your data use requests here, uh, in addition to it being level three and limited data set, which requires an IRB, you can here um, request access to this PPRL data sets and three that are available now are the CMS. And so when you get CMS, you get access to both the Medicare as well as the Medicaid data sets. Uh, and then, so you, you can also request individually access to mortality and viral variants if you wish to. Um, the other way to access this, if you have an existing research project that is uh, the identified or level three, uh, you can request an upgrade of your workspace to get access to these um, uh, resources. And so the way to do that is you go to the My Projects page. Um, I don't have any, I'm not part of any research project, so um, you won't see anything in in this dashboard, but if I'm, I'm just showing for the example, and this is uh, Dr. Gerson's uh, DUR view, um, um, and I hope he's okay with me showing this, but essentially I just wanted to show how to request the upgrade uh, of your research project. So say this, this long COVID project is accepted as LDS data sets, but you want to upgrade it to be able to use the CMS claims or mortality, um, you, uh, uh, basically, there is a link for um, to uh, to revise your DUR. Sorry, I just lost um, the page. Let me go back to this. And so here you'll you'll see a link, uh, a revised DUR link, and this is where you request your up your upgrade. So it looks very similar to the initial DUR, but you can go here and request uh, um, add uh, the PPRL data sets. Uh, so you can add here uh, CMS, mortal CMS and mortality if you wish to upgrade your workspace to allow the usage of these two data sets. Um, so this was just um, a quick overview on how to request access to these tables. Now, um, uh, where to find these data sets and how to use them in your analysis. So most of the data sets that you'll need are in the data catalog. And so if your project is uh, permission to uh, use the LDS uh, limited data set data collection, you'll find this in this LDS data collection. So these are all the OMAP tables that are LDS. In addition to that, if, if your research projects have been approved to use PPRL data sets, such as, such as mortality and CMS, uh, there is a PPRL data sets uh, collection here, which includes most of the data sets you need. So I won't open these data sets here because they include um, uh, patient data, uh, but this is the mortality table. Uh, I showed the schema of it uh, earlier in the presentation. And this has all the mortality records coming from the various sources. Uh, similarly, this is the viral variant data set. And then if you want access to Medicare claims or Medicaid claims data, uh, you can access them here. So for Medicare, you can either use the OMAP format. So this, this looks very much like the um, LDS data sets. Um, we received the Medicare claims in uh, the quote unquote, the claims format, which is a vendor derived format, and we did the har the CDM harmonization to convert them into OMAP. So you will see a person table just like an OMAP data set. You'll see a condition table, um, and so these are in OMAP format, except that they are claims. Uh, if you prefer analyzing the CMS Medicare data in the original claims format and not in OMAP, you have the option to do that. And so you will just go to the claims format of Medicare data sets, and then you'll have all the tables. Um, if you're used to this claims format, the member's benefit is the one that like has all the, um, the patient IDs. Um, and so, um, and then you have Medicaid claims um, uh, data sets in OMA format. So this is more, um, I just mentioned how, where to find the data sets. Um, 
and then you if you if you're working from a research project uh, and I'll just open an example here um, This is just an example research project that doesn't have um, uh, real examples. Uh, let's say, let me just create a folder here. Let's call it N3C Community Forum Presentation. And so if you want to use these data sets, you can create an analysis here. So it could be a code workbook, uh, a Jupyter notebook, or a, a contour analysis if you prefer analyzing data with uh, just uh, a no code tool. And so you'll be able to select all the data sets that you have access to from here. So if you have access to the CMS claims, you can go to the CMS uh, Medicare data collection, for example. And then uh, let's say I want to import the uh, person table. Uh, so I'll import it without um, showing the data, but you will be able to uh, import it in your analysis and then start an uh, analysis on it. Um, so uh, I talked about uh, the available PPR resources. Um, uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is the updates to the manifest table. Uh, and so um, going back to the data catalog, um, one of the useful tables in the LDS or the identified data collection is this manifest table. And this manifest table contains uh, information about each data partner. Uh, for example, the, the data model that they submit data into. Uh, in fact, I may have, uh, um, I, I passed the, uh, the schema here or the column name. So you have a data partner ID and then you have the, the data model, whether it's Cornet, Trinet, X, OMAP. So that's the, the source data model. And then you have information about uh, the releases and the submission and whether they're doing date shifting, or whether the site is doing date shifting or not. Uh, we added four new columns to this manifest table to give you more information about which data partners are allowing us to link their data with external sources. And so these four columns are site-to-site -site linkage, CMS linkage, mortality linkage, and viral variant linkage. And so uh, these are just Booleans. So if site-to-site -site linkage is true, that means that the site is allowing us to run the PPRL uh, procedure or software on top of their data. And so we are able to uh, deduplicate their patients. And I'll talk about deduplication in a bit. If CMS linkage, is true uh, as a, a value. That means that particular data partner allows us to link their data to the CMS claims. And so in that case, it is possible to find, to join the persons, uh, the data for the patients uh, from that site to the core, their corresponding claims if they have corresponding claims in the CMS data set. Uh, and so um, just showing some statistics here, uh, these are just uh, counts of how many data partners have allowed us to perform linkage. And so I'll start with the individual ones. So for the CMS, Medicare and Medicaid, uh, 20 data partners out of the 78 release data partners are allowing us to link their data to, uh, to the CMS claims. Uh, and so uh, for mortality, it's 26 uh, uh, data partners. Um, and then six for viral variant. Uh, and then more generally, uh, 45 of, out of the 78 data partners uh, are allowing us to perform PPRL on their data, which means that we can deduplicate uh, patients um, uh, for these uh, data partners. Um, and so going back to, um, let me open a, uh, an analysis and then um, walk through. So this is just the manifest table. Um, so I, I explained what uh, these um, flags mean. Uh, 
Now, just to say a few words about the site-to-site -site linkage and about patient deduplication. Um, if you're familiar with the person table, which is the person that has that is in the OMAP data model and has information about um, patients and their demographics. Uh, in fact, person ID, which is the M3C person ID, is the unique identifier uh, of each one of these uh, uh, for each patient. And it's the primary key uh, of uh, this person table. Uh, now, I can't show the data of the person table, but I'm just showing this schema. So it has a number of columns. Uh, and I'm just filtering to person ID, uh, which is the, has been the unique identifier for a patient. Uh, the data partner ID, which identifies the sites that is submitting the data. And this is the new column that we added. So we added a column that is called global person ID. And uh, the reason for that is, let's say you have a patient that went to, um, say, UNC and Duke and they went to two different data partners. Uh, we have no way to know um, that that person is, uh, they will have different person IDs depending on the, on the site and the data partner that they went to. And so there is no way to know, there's been no way to know that this patient is the same in N3C. Uh, the same patient would have two different person IDs. Uh, using PPRL, we are able to actually deduplicate that patient. And so meaning we're able to say that even though um, in the person table, we have two different person IDs uh, that went to two different data partners, they are actually the same person because they have the same global person ID. And so this is what the global person ID allows you to do is to uh, further deduplicate the patient and and uh, and perform analysis on a, perhaps a smaller subset uh, of patients. Uh, so I mentioned the case where a person went to two different data partners or multiple even multiple de de data partners. Uh, but there is also the case when uh, the same data partner uh, and this is less frequent, but it ha also happens. The same day portrait partner could send us information about different person IDs. Uh, but these are, uh, when we perform PPRL, we realize that it, it is actually the same person. Um, they just got different person IDs for, for various reasons. And so using the global person ID, again, we're able to uh, say that uh, that person is the same. And so uh, when you look at the um, person table and then you just plot a histogram on the global person IDs, I obfuscated all the global person IDs that exist here uh, because it's real patient data. But in that column, you'll either see that um, for data partners that allowed us to link and perform PPRL on their data, uh, if there is no global person ID for that person ID, that means that no duplicate or linkage was found for that person. Um, but there are data partners that are not have not yet signed up for PPRL. And in that case, the absence of a global ID does not necessarily mean that there is no duplicates or no linkage with our other sources. It just means that the data partner is not participating in linkage and therefore uh, we were not able to say whether they have data in CMS or whether they correspond to another person in a different site. Uh, but for the persons, for the sites um, that have allowed us to uh, perform PPRL on their data, um, about 600,000 of them have global person IDs, which means they either have a record in CMS or they have a duplicate uh, counterpart patient uh, in another data partner or within the same data partner. And so um, this is just another view of the person table, uh, computing the unique number of person IDs we have. Uh, and this is just for the person IDs that have a corresponding global person ID. We're able to go from uh, 677,000 uh, persons to down to 600,000 uh, persons. So this is how much we're able to deduplicate the patient data. Um, I think that's all I wanted to mention and, and, and about um, 
uh, deduplication and about the global IDs. At the end of the presentation, I will pass a, uh, uh, a dashboard, which we call the feature participation dashboard. This is the, the dashboard that can be used by uh, the sites, by our data partners to opt in and, and allow us to perform linkage and PPRL on their site. So they can go in and use this dashboard and say, I want my data to be linked to mortality, or I want my data to be linked to a CMS. And um, once they allow it to do that, then we can show, uh, we can perform the linkage and show that linkage information to researchers. Um, so um, I talked about the manifest table. I talked about deduplication. I think uh, last thing I wanted to mention in this presentation is just some high level statistics. Uh, so if I go to the same analysis that I was showing and let me import um, the CMS tables without necessarily showing the data, I just wanted to give you an idea of the, the size of the data sets that uh, um, we're, we're able to have using PPRL. Uh, so for the Medicare data set, if we import the person table, and let's just, uh, and we can see it here. So, so far in uh, the Medicare claims, out of the 19 million patients in N3C, uh, we have 200 uh, thousand more than 200,000 of them that have records in CMS, in the CMS claims. This number will get bigger as we expand uh, the linkage uh, to all uh, between CMS and N3C. Currently, we're only linking, uh, we're only performing the linkage for uh, patients that have been diagnosed uh, and confirmed as COVID positive. Uh, so, but this will expand uh, in the near future to uh, perform the linkage on all N3C patients, which means that this number will, will get much bigger. And this number will also increase uh, the more we have data partners, uh, the data partners signing up to uh, for PPRL and to allow us to perform the linkage on their data. Um, let's do the same thing for Medicaid and then mortality. And then the last thing I will do is just show how to perform a join between claims and the OMA person table. Um, so if we go to Medicaid and let's import the person table. So as you can see, so far for Medicaid, we have data for about uh, 40,000 uh, patients. Um, in mort for the mortality data set, uh, if we um, bring in the mortality table, so we're able to bring in mortality records from SSA obituary.com uh, and private obituary. Uh, for uh, we're able to bring in an additional almost 500,000 records. And again, this is only including persons from the sites who have signed up for uh, to perform a linkage with mortality. Um, so this could be larger, but this helps us complement the death table uh, that is in the OMA format uh, in N3C. Um, now, the last thing is uh, I wanted to show is, uh, say you have this, uh, I guess the question is, how do we perform a join and combine claims with EHR data? Uh, if you look at the person table in EHR, and I'm only going to show the column names here. Um, so the schema is the same as OMOP, you have a person ID. However, this is the CMS person ID. So it uniquely identifies the CMS uh, Medicare record. And when you, if you have access to the data and you start analyzing it, you'll see that it starts with a CMS prefix. Now, in order to join this with the uh, EHR person table, which also has an N3C person ID, uh, we have put together a mapping table that maps between the CMS person ID and the N3C person ID. 
And so that table is, um, if I, I can, um, let's just insert a join board here and let me import this patient, this uh, uh, mapping table from the data catalog. So in the uh, Medicare data collection in the OMAP format, there is a table uh, called CMS person ID to M3C person ID. So that's the mapping table that allows you to uh, join and go from a CMS person to an M3C person. And so uh, in order to do that, we're starting with a person uh, with a CMS person ID. And so we can bring in the M3C person ID um, and the join condition will be uh, on this uh, CMS person ID. And so again, now that uh, showing just the columns, now that we have the N3C person ID, we were able to join with the N3C, the EHR person table uh, based on this N3C person ID. So we can go in and if you have access to the LDS data collection, you can go here and then import the person table. And now the, you, and you can bring in all the values or you can just bring in the, uh, let's say the gender concept and then compare it with the gender in CMS. Uh, but the most important thing here is to join on the N3C personalized column, uh, which is, um, sorry, N3C personalized. And so this is this was a quick example showing how to combine um, EHR data with claims using this mapping table, the CMS person ID to N3C person ID table. Um, to wrap up, I'll just remind people of um, some training resources. Again, this was not an in-depth um, presentation about PPRL and how we're performing the linkage. It was mostly a reminder of where you to find the resources and how to use them in the training portal that you'll find here. Um, there's a number of, um, if you filter by PPRL, uh, we have put together a number of training modules and some of them are uh, video webinars and some are more uh, in-depth documentation. So there is a viral variant guide, there is a CMS claims, guide here. So all of those have been put together uh, by various people uh, and explaining what the data is and how to use it. And there is a just a general intro to EPRL uh, that um, researchers can refer to to understand the process and, and how we're performing PPRL. Uh, so just a reminder that these resources exist. And um, uh, other than that, you can always uh, stop by office hours or, or file issue tickets if you have questions about all these resources. Um, so I'll stop here and see if there are any questions. Great. Well, thanks. That's very informative. Um, there's one question. Uh, is the revised UR button active very operational? I don't see it as an option. That's so um, I would say it depends on is your project active. Uh, some of the projects have been uh, closed after a year of activity. So if it's not, if the project is not active, you just uh, resubmit a, uh, a request to reopen it. Um, but if your project is already LDS or de-identified, then you can just submit a revised DUR. It should be working. Um, if you have any issues, you can reach out to us. All right, Ken Gersig is typing an answer, but we don't see the answer yet, but I'm sure it's very authoritative. Um, while he's typing the answer. So yeah, I assume the process is this, the same for the tenant, um, the tenant data sets. So for the tenants, and maybe I can let you can respond to that. My understanding is that we are linking to mortality for the existing tenants. Uh, we are not yet linking to uh, Medicare or Medicaid. I don't know if you add, you want to add anything to that, Ken. Yes, yeah, Saad. Um, I, that that's right. Um, 
the uh, uh, Joel, um, we had to pay CMS money to use their data. And in order to get it, we only were allowed to use it for um, COVID. So wow. we have to go back and negotiate with them and pay them more money, um, which is not, it's definitely not out of the, um, the realm of possibility. What we're trying to do is invite them to actually be part of the tenants going forward and then invite them to be on the DAC and our hope is that then they will, by having joint control, they will also allow us to use the data more broadly without not having to write a, it's called a DUA, a DUA for each type of disease is not scalable. So we're really trying to figure out a way to work with CMS longer term, but the short term is it's not in the tenants. We were able to put mortality in the tenants because mortality actually because those people have passed away are not technically um, protected, um, right. uh, which makes sense. And, and so we were able to just link that and, and, and we paid had paid for that. So um, I, I wish I could um, say CMS will be available, but right now it's not. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, Joel, I also passed it in the chat, what I talked about, which is the, what we call the PPRL participation form. Uh, so if you're a data partner and you're interested in uh, um, allowing the data to be linked to one of these resources, uh, then this form is how you do that. I see. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's very, very useful. Okay, great. Other Other questions or thoughts? Okay, well, that's incredible progress. that's that's really that's really exciting. So, this is um, obviously becoming quite, quite, uh, quite routine, and um, I'm sure it'll be uh, very useful in the tenants as well as as things roll out. And and what the other only other thing I'll say is not that I can promise any of these, but we are we plan to have SEER as part of the greater in three C. SEER is the registry for um, cancer, and we will also have it as part of the tenant. And we are trying our best to get renal failure um uh data for the renal tenant um so uh you know more to come but our our we're right now moving towards pulling in data sets that are complementary to the, the research tenant and it just feels like registries are natural they're kind of narrow and deep and n3c is wide and shallow so it feels like a good combination. oh that's really nice so the sir who are you working with with sir um, we're working with um, it, with well, it's it's a group of people there, but it's Gurbanate. I don't know if you know Gurbanate and Lynn Pernathy and Jill Barnholt Sloan. Oh yeah, no, no, I know Lynn well. She funds one of my grants actually. So now that's exciting. That's that's very cool. And Sierra, of course, is is very. It's a very complex data set with many different levels. So uh, I don't know that everybody else needs to listen to this, but. That's very impressive, and I'll be interested. I'd be very interested to hear uh, to hear uh, details. That's very that's very very uh, impressive. So this would be the the sort of whole nationwide SEER data set. Would would it be um, would it be uh, set up so that data linkage could could happen uh, the way the way um, the, the the other data sets are? That's exactly right, Joel. The the SEER would be in the tenant pilot. SEER of the sites that are part of the pilot, so it's not as broad as N3C COVID, would be from states where we could get SEER data. And that data, would they would put PPRL on. Um, okay. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm confident, by the way, New York, I, I can't promise, but we work closely with New York. We, we actually have a UH3 involving linking pathology data, and New York SEER is, is, is involved with that. So could, would reach out I, if they're not involved already. Uh, I, I have my anticipation is they'd be interested. We would we would love that. So. Cool. Well, that's that's, that's exciting. All right. Well, thanks. This was really, as always, very informative and uh, huge progress. And uh, and and I and I love the um, this generalization to um, you know many many different areas, which is which is great. So um and and so in terms of the kidney data, so what what data source would you be linking that to? I mean, so obviously you've got all of the different sites who have uh, um, acute renal and chronic renal failure data and the like, but 
Is there some other data source uh, involving a kidney that you're that you yeah. want to link? Again, Joel, we we don't have, and I don't want to promise um, something I don't have, but we are working with the ASPE team um, to get um, uh, USRBS and SRTR, which is I never can remember what this acronym is. It's it's the uh, Research Trans Transplant Registry. Maybe I think the S may be society up, but it's the tran transplant oh, okay. registry. Okay, that, that makes that makes a lot of and, sense. And USRDS. Okay, so those are two yeah. groups we're working with. So we hope to get one of one of them, if not both. Excellent. Okay. Well, well, Saad, thank you very much for a great talk. Very, and thanks everybody for attending. So I'm I'm going to be off uh, on another continent for uh, for a few weeks. So Janos uh, Hajagos uh, will be taking over my. Uh, my every other week, five o'clock Eastern uh, slot. So, um, and I guess we're off on, in August. So uh, take care. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks. Thank you, everybody.